this is just there is two second figures that's infinitely many second figures that's three second figures so run about there. Use your calculator's memory to keep as many significant figures as possible in between calculations. I don't know if the answer is correct in the tutorial. Line of action along there. 
that is x. Okay? So you can see that T y will want to make it go out of the board, positive, and T x will also want to make it go out of the board. Okay? Also want to make it go out of the board. So both of them are actually added together. Okay. There's the line of action of Px. It's a positive moment around the point A. Okay, so it's Px times y. And it is Ty times x at the other. So, uh, I didn't read your question completely, but um, do they ask for the magnitude of the moment or the, the vector of the moment? Uh, this case, I asked for the mag for the vector itself. So in other words, the, when they say the moment, then it means vector because we know a moment is a vector. And would it suffice in this case that we know because the tension is pulling in this direction that it's coming out of? Yes, of course. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So, so in this case, you don't have to, you don't have to do the cross products yeah. because you know it's coming out of the board. Okay. But if there's any doubt, then of course you do the cross products. That's exactly what we said earlier. That's a very important question that you ask. If you see the thing, obviously this thing is coming out of the board. Then you don't have to worry about the cross products. Then you stick with your, your, your uh, simply with your uh, scalars, okay. all the shortcuts you learn. But if it's a funny moment which is pointing in some sort of three-dimensional mode or direction, then of course you have to do your cross products. Okay, and you also ask here, someone asked, can you can you use a K hat here? Of course. K hat, physics way, any way is a circle. Doesn't matter. Okay. The physics guy will think when he sees that. Yeah. You can see here they use it all the time. Okay, so now we know the magnitude of the vector. I'm, I'm not going to be happy with this answer because I asked for the moment, and then the moment is a vector. So I want you to write here M subscript A vector magnitude and direction. Yeah, by just giving this, you lose half a mark because you're only going to be the magnitude. Mm. Yep. Um, again, I'm confused because if you're doing your calculator, with, with the Second line, the sign, the sign piece has been left out because you're saying it's perpendicular, so it's yeah, 90. Curious. Okay. Yeah. 
But those are two individual cross products that you're adding yeah. together. Yeah. You can see this 2 meters sine of 60, that is x. And 0.4 times cosine of 60 okay. is supposed to be y. So it's actually two moments and then you're just adding them. Correct. Okay. Very much zero. Okay, once you've got the, the moment, um, some people say it's correct. They add it directly there, so this is a direct answer. So you must keep it like that, because it's the vector. You must leave it like that. You must give it a Right? Then what you do is you say, okay, I'd like to know what is FC. I know that FC is perpendicular to, to this distance over here. Okay, so all I have to work out is what that distance is. I use Pythagoras theorem to use distance. Right? And 2.413 zero meters. So 2.4130 meters multiplied by FC, which I don't know, must be equal to 3864.41. Okay? So what I do is make FC the subject of my formula. Get to the next line. Make it the subject of my formula. There we go. And there's my answer. Now they'd like to get to your, then you have to get your, dist, your direction, because you know, you've only got your magnitude. You know it's perpendicular. This vector over here must be perpendicular to D. There it is. It must be perpendicular. You already know what that, that angle is over there, because you know what that is 2 meters, that is 1.35 meters, so you can work out that angle over there. So it's then quite easy to work out what this angle is over here. So first of all, arc tan, you get this angle over here. You know that's 90 degrees, from that you can work out what is your direction. Here it is. It's perpendicular to D, so here's your answer. So all of about 8 marks for, for a question like this. Okay, again, you can work it out simply straightforward cross products, or you can do what we showed you earlier, where you look at components. Okay, it's, uh, if it's not on the, on the uh, SharePoint site, then it, it, MEV102, I'll, I'll post it there. Apparently I made a mistake. I put the chapter 5 stuff in chapter 3. So it will be there. This. Uh, it's just a kind of interesting question. Okay, these are the same as what we already done. That's the second tutorial question, very similar to the one we read in the board uh, on the, as the examples. So there's a whole host of those. Nothing funny there. There's another one of these. This is isn't the same one. Same one. around the point C, this, this is by the way, it's a current case, that's a connecting rod, it's a piston, working out the moments around the different points, nothing funny about that, ah, okay, this could be an interesting one, um, determine the moment about each of the coordinate axes of the force exerted by the cable at C, same as what we had, or similar to what we had already before, the sample problem we did, yep, Yes, yeah, so I just asked about the previous one that you put up. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that 2.5 kilometer force pointing down. Yeah. Um, we, okay, we want to calculate the moment um, and see. Yes. So uh, does, the force, uh, does the force translate down in the direction of A, B, or is it just vertically down? Um, they say here, A, B, exerts on the crank, uh, B, C, the force of 2.5 kilonewton, uh, directly down and to the left along the center line of A, B. So it's along the center line, it's not, it's not straight down, but it's pointing in this direction. Okay. So the line of action of that force is this direction. So you need to calculate what that angle is between uh, that and the crank. Con con rod, is that that's a crack and that's a con rod. You guys want to be engineers, you should know these things. Huh? 
Frank? Monroe? This Okay, so it's pointing down. There's a force down here, but the force that's supposed to be talking about is uh, along this line of action. It's 3.5 in here. That's just simply a case of calculation. Nothing funny about that. Yeah, it's similar. Lots of the same, 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 same. This is a nice challenging question. So I'm going to leave it for you to do the homework at home. Because done this one. No, no, just if you could go back to the previous one. Um, it's like the secret to this one knowing that the force is divided by two. Like CE will be that uh, no. tension. No, the, the tension in the cable is 1349 newtons. Um, determine the moment about each of the coordinate axis. In other words, the tension there is exactly that. It's not divided by two. Okay. Okay, so that's what, that's what the tension is. Whether it's slipping or not slipping, that is the tension in the cable, so that's the force that's implied in there. Okay, here, here the A difference is now, they ask you to determine the moment, not around a point, but along a coordinate axis. Okay, you can do that now. That's the next, uh, next, the next little bit of theory we do. The moment around an axis. We've now spoken about moments around points, we can now look at moments around an axis. Um, just while we're here and say this question is a nice challenging one, it is, it is easy, but you could not keep your head around you because the uh, origin sits here, not there. So if you pull over here, you look at the, at the moment of that force around the origin. So it's well explained, I mean, good, but um, you hand wave in front of you and start yawning and actually, you may actually going to get close and personal with this question. It's, it's, it takes a bit long because it's a lot of angles and stuff, but it's quite a nice question. You can see I've asked this before in exam papers. I think there's a similar one. Yep, there it is. Another one like that. And, okay, so let's go back to the theory. Let's just first go finish on the theory. Ok, 
Okay, let's go for it. Okay, there's the usual stuff. Um, uh, algebra, vector algebra, you know about that already. Uh, dot product is simply the um, magnitude of a dot product is simply the products of the components. Okay. Or simply cosine theta p times q times cosine theta. Scale the result. So depends on what you what you want to do. Okay. If you want to know what the angle between two vectors um, is, all you do is you take your uh, dot product over there, there it is, divided by PQ, that gives you cosine P, you can see where it comes from. Because P times Q times cosine theta is the dot product, and the dot product is equal to P times QX, P times QY, P times QZ. So to find the angle between two vectors is very easy. Use that little trick over there. Another part of your cunning plan arsenal. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so the slide shows. And a year. Okay, so that's exactly what I spoke about earlier projection of a vector on a given axis, or as we call it, the component of a vector in a given direction. The projection or component. Projection, component, same word. There you go. So if instance, we have a vector P here, we'd like to know what is its component in the direction L. All we have to find is the unit vector in the direction L, and dot product it, and that will give us the projection or the component of P in the direction L. Here we go. Okay, I'd like to know what is the component of P in the direction O L. All I have to do is just dot product with the unit vector in the direction O L. If you want to know the component of P in the direction X, you dot product with I hat. If you want to know what its projection is in the direction Z, you dot product with K hat. Or with J hat. Or in the direction O L, lambda. Yeah, and that is, this is the most useful part of, of dot products. We already intuitively do it when we do we use unit vectors. We just didn't know that. Okay, that we don't really know from applied maths. Nothing funny there. Oh, okay. Moment of force about a given axis. We've now spoken about moments of force around a given uh, point. That we are quite familiar with, there's a force F over there. We'd like to know what it's going to put moment around the point O. It's easy to find that moment around the point O. Now, if you'd like to know what the moment is around the given axis, all we do is we dot product that moment around the point O with a unit vector in whatever direction I want. If I want to know what the component of MO is in the X direction, I dot product that with K hat. If you want to know what the component of MO in the X direction is, I simply project that vector on the X direction. Or if I want to know what the component of that vector in the lambda direction is, I just dot product with lambda. Okay? So, when they ask you what is the moment of this vector around the X axis, it's very simple. All you take is work out what the moment is around the origin, okay, and do your calculation around the, find the component of the moment around the X component at the moment, simple as that. Okay, so let's show you. Much simpler than what you think. This is a formal way of explaining it. I'll show you now it's actually much simpler. So again, if you want to find the moment uh, of a force around a different axis or a certain axis, all you do is take the moment around a point, okay, and dot product <coughs> in the direction of whichever, whichever that axis is. If it is the x-axis, that would be i hat, <coughs> I hat dot uh, m, which would be the x component of the moment, or the j component, <coughs> k component, whatever. Or if it's lambda, which is some arbitrary direction, and this is lambda, find the unit vector there. Okay, so m is simply just the, the moment. Now, question is, 
Uh, what moment must you find? And the answer is simple. It can be any moment along any of these points over here. It doesn't have to be around the origin. Okay. You won't understand what I just said. Maybe some of you would. But you will come clear. I can take actually the moment around any point along this axis. It doesn't have to be there. Okay. The other funny thing about the moment um, of a force around an axis, it can be positive or negative. Both the same. It, it actually hasn't got a positive or negative. It hasn't got a right answer. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative. Okay, so if you get a negative answer, that's fine. It's 100%. Right, so if we ask you what is the moment of this force around the x-axis, it's the x component of the moment. Okay, if we ask what is the moment of this force around the y-axis, it's simply the y component of the moment. If you want to know what the moment of this force around it is, the z axis, it's simply the z component. Okay? Of any point along the x axis or z axis or y axis, it doesn't have to be the origin, just as long as it's convenient. Okay? This explains that, what I just mentioned. Okay? Say, for instance, you have a moment and you'd like to work out what the moment is, not around a point, but along a direction. Now, whether it's BL or LB, we'll determine whether it's positive or negative. But the moment around BL and LB is the same. The only difference is that one will be positive and one will be negative. Okay. Why is it that um, MBL is not lambda dot uh, MC? Uh, MC, MC, where's M? Where's you? C? Yeah, couldn't you work out the moment at C? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, exactly. So what he's saying is MBL is equal to lambda dot MB, okay, so a moment around the point B, but that is equal to lambda dot M around the point C, around any point you, you, you want to use it. Okay, that's the, that's the next uh, line, I think. Oh, yeah. well, I don't have to forget this. You can write it in there. In your, in your book. So that is equal to lambda dot mc or any point along that line over there. They, they, they show it here but they didn't actually do the formula. Okay, just make sure you get it. The moment along the axis uh, BL is the unit vector in the direction BL. Now, in the direction DL or LB, it doesn't matter. It must just be along that line there. The lambda is along that line there. The dot product with the moment of the force along any point along this line. Whether it's B or C or whatever, it doesn't matter. So what this actually simply is, is the component of MB in the direction of the axis. MC in the direction of the axis, or MD, or whatever point you chose. But you choose a convenient point. Now you can see, in a case like this, you will choose a point which is perpendicular to your axis to work it out easier. You won't use a funny point somewhere where it's difficult to get the angles and stuff. And that's the beauty of it. You use the shortest, most convenient uh, distance to work out the moment around the, around the axis. We're going to do an example, if you didn't follow that, because I'm pretty sure most of you over your head. <laughs> Some of you actually follow, I'm not uh, doubting that, but if you didn't follow, don't panic. Yeah, the result is independent of point B along any given, uh, yeah, any point along the axis. Here's the example. Okay, I must say, I, I always struggle with this last part here, but I like this question very much. Uh, in terms of the perpendicular distance between A, B and F, C. For some reason, I just don't get it always, but it's okay. It's just like, maybe, it's, maybe it's the way they work it out, it's not like, but anyway. Okay, so this is a very, very nice question that, that tests whether you understand what happens to the now. 